place is Switzerland. The time, early spring, 1978. An unusual team of people makes its way to a secret rendezvous. Their goal, a tiny mountain village named Schmidbrutti. Head of the team is Lee Elders. Based in Phoenix, Arizona, he runs a company called Intercept that deals in industrial counter-espionage. Britt Elders, his wife and partner in Intercept, specializes in electronics. The third member of the team, also a partner and longtime associate, is Tom Welsh. They were brought here by Wendell Stevens, retired Air Force Colonel and for over 20 years one of the world's leading UFO investigators. Their mission? To check out one of the most remarkable UFO cases ever reported. One that has been called alternately too good to be true, the hoax of the century, or the start of a new age for humankind. Steve, how long has this case been going on? Since 1975. How many uh, sightings or experiences has this man had? Well, he's had over 30 that I've heard of so far. What makes the case so special in your mind? Why bring uh, us all the way up here from Arizona? Man, up to now we've been dealing with just the tip of the iceberg. There's a, a mountain of evidence here. There's other witnesses, there's lots of photographs, there's recorded sounds, there's landing tracks, a lot of things in this case. Bigger than any case I ever saw before. How far are we from Zurich? Oh, about 35 miles, 35 kilometers, I think. Man, I've never seen so many switchbacks in my life. This is remote. Stevens leaves them over a circuitous route, winding through back roads and stopping often along the way. Why all the precautions? Well, I didn't want to tell you this before, but this man's been shot at. Shot, shot at? Yeah, somebody's trying to kill him. Why? I don't know. There's uh, some people are spooked by this whole thing, and he's being threatened. That's My terrible. Lord. Thus begins what was to become a five-year investigation. Before it is over, they will be embroiled in controversy and forced to use every resource at their command. Hi, Mr. Billy. Okay. Yeah. I brought my friend's been telling you about. This is Britt Elders. Hi. Good to meet you. His name is Edward Meyer. He is called Billy, an old nickname that sprang from his fondness for heroes of the American West. Buffalo Bill, Wild Bill, and Billy the Kid. He is a farmer. He claims he has been in contact with beings from another world. He also claims to have proof of these contacts. Mr. Meyer, when did the experiences begin? The contact begins on January... 28, 1975, in Hinville. Mm -hmm. How did it happen? What, what made you go outside into the forest? I got something like a very nice voice in my head. I heard something to leave the house, to go out and to take a photo camera with me. So I left my house and then when I was far upside from the village, I heard a singing noise in the sky. And when I was looking up there, I have seen a disc. This disc was flying on the clouds, and then it came to the point where I was uh, staying with my motorcycle. Then, slowly, slowly, it comes lower and lower and set it down between the white trees and the forest there behind. Mm -hmm. Meyer later photographs the impressions left by the disc's tripod landing gear. The grass has been pressed and swirled in a counterclockwise direction. Even a year later, the grass has not sprung back, but Meyer notes that the impressions swarm with insect life. Then I have seen a person who came out of the disc. Person and, came out? Yeah. And when the person came out of the left side of the trees there, I have seen that it is a woman. Mr. Meyer, what did they look like? She looks like a human from this earth. Like you, like I. Like human beings from this earth. 
You call us extraterrestrials, and you attribute to us superhuman powers. But we are like you. We too are still far removed from perfection and must evolve constantly, just like yourselves. After the first words, we turned and was going to this tree here. You walked over here? Yeah. How tall was she, Billy? Uh, it's about uh, one meter and seventy centimeter. About like that? So a little bit about like my size. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she sits chest here and I here. Sit down. Ah. <coughs> and then you then sat here, here and talked to her? Yeah, then we was talking here for uh, about one hour or one hour and a quarter, something like that. Did she give you a name? What did you call her? Yeah, she told me her name is Semyase. Semyase? Yeah. Billy, what kind of feeling did you have sitting here under this tree with a woman who just landed in a spacecraft? I wasn't afraid about these things. I was afraid about the army only because they have a station somewhere there behind the forest. But I wasn't afraid about the disc. Where did they come from, Mr. Meyer? They shall be coming from the star picture of the Pleiades. The Pleiades, a bright star cluster some 500 light years from Earth. Although the cluster consists of hundreds of stars, seven stand out clearly to the naked eye. The Greeks call them the nymphs of heaven. We call them the seven sisters. What was going through your mind? Uh, what did you want to talk about? You see, my head was full of questions. But the most of the time, she was telling me, and I hadn't many chances to ask her something. Several times we have tried to establish contact with Earth humans, but usually those selected were not willing. They were afraid others would consider them liars, or mad, or would try to destroy them. You see, the first she told me I shall get the most best pictures of UFOs, what's ever happened on Earth. And the second thing, I shall go out to tell the truth to the human on Earth, why they are coming to here, what reason they have that they are coming to Earth not to harm us, not to make war, not to bring peace, just to bring a teaching. Why are they interested in us, a society thousands of years behind them in technological development? According to Maya, we share common ancestors.